I'd like to speak a little bit today about starting to Shabbat Shabbat Hamas, starting in three weeks. So I'd like to speak a little bit about that. So first of all, the three weeks from Shabbat Shabbat Hamas till Tisha B'av, we know it's called Yimei Bein HaMitzarim. The days of Bein HaMitzarim, it comes from a Pasuk in Eicha, Pasuk in Eicha says, Kol Reit Fer Hisigua Bein HaMitzarim. Bein HaMitzarim is between the boundaries really is Meitzah is really a boundary, or Meitzah can mean the Lashon of Tsar, Tsaris. So Rashi brings down, one of the Mepharshim from Rashi brings down from a Medrash, that Beit HaMetzorim means between Shabbat Shabbat Hamas and, and Tisha B'Av. Why? Because Shabbat Shabbat Hamas, we said today in Tzalichas, a lot of bad things happened on that day, and that was the beginning, as I say, the beginning of the end. That was the beginning of the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash, Put Latomid, they broke into the city. So a lot of things that happened on Shabbat Shabbat is that that was the beginning of the end. That was the beginning of the destruction of the base of Mikdash. So that's why we fast on Shabbat Shabbat Hamas. And from Shabbat Shabbat Hamas till Tisha B'Av, it's called the May Bain Hamitzar. Now, what happens in these three weeks? We know we don't listen to music in these three weeks. We don't have a not haircuts. The truth is that the real iser of haircuts, the real iser of music, chasana starts from the nine days. And the Sephardim really don't have any, they don't have this meaning that we have from Shavas of to not to take haircuts, not to listen to music, it's the Ramah. If you look at Shulchan Aruch, and Shulchan Aruch, it doesn't say anywhere anything about from Shavuot Sabbath Tammuz till Tisha B'Av, they are not allowed to listen to music. It says you're not allowed to from Shechari Deshav, Shavuot Shechalbe maybe. It's all the Ramah. The Ramah adds in a few places. So it says over here, Ve'ein noisin noshim, ve'ein noisin sudas erisin, this is all talking about, the Machaber is talking about Mereshchaydish Ad Hatainis. From Mereshchaydish to the fast of Tisha B'Av, Bematin Bemas. So, Matin, it's all, a lot of halachas that we do from, from in Mereshchaydish Av. The Ma throws in over here, Venehagin Lahachme, Shein Noisim, Meyadzayim, Betamas, Veelich Ad Achat Tisha B'Av. Our minig is that we're Machme, we don't have chasanis from Shivas and Betamas, and Tlach of Tisha B'Av, that's one halacha. And later on, when the Mechaber says that you know, take haircuts, you know, to wash in the nine days, so the Rumos says over there also, when the Hagim la Hachmir mitchilitz was chodesh and kibus, avol taspoiras, which is haircuts, the Hagim la Hachmir miyud zayin betamuz. We know you from Shavuot to betamuz and on for haircuts. So it's really the Rumos, it's the Ashkenazim, they have this chumra, Shavuot to betamuz and on, that we don't have chastanus, no music, no haircuts. That's the, that's the Ashkenazim. But even the Sephardim, they do have something from Shavuot to Betamus till Tisha B'Av. There's no meaning of Avelus, of haircuts and chastanus, but there is, we see the Haftaris of these three Shabbosim, even the Sephardim have it. The Haftaris that we read in these three Shabbosim, the Haftaris are called Sholesh the Peronusa. The three Haftaris of Peronius. You see, we don't learn the regular Haftaris. We learn Shalash the Peronius that Yemiah was telling Klai Yisrael what's going to happen. Hashem told Yemiah to go tell Klai Yisrael to to Tshuva, because if not, what's going to happen to them? That's what the Haftaris are these three weeks. Shalash the Peronusa. <coughs> and they're so important, these Haftaris. They're Rosh Chodesh, the Haftaris of Rosh Chodesh is Deicha every Haftaris. When Rosh Chodesh falls out on Shabbos, we lay in the Haftarah of Rosh Chodesh. But when it comes time to the three weeks, we pass in, that if Rosh Chodesh falls out on Shabbos, we don't lay in the Haftarah of Rosh Chodesh. We lay in the Haftarah of Shalash the Paranusa. That's what we lay in. This Haftarah. So even according to the Sephardim, they don't have the meaning of Avelos through haircuts and through music, but they also have these three weeks as Shalash the Pranusa. Three weeks that we lay in the Aftaira of the Pranias that happened to Kalisha. 
And we have to understand. So we have three weeks over here. And these three weeks are meant for us to what? To cry over the Chorim Beis HaMegdash. Allah has brought down that even though you don't say Titin Chatzois a whole year, during the three weeks, you should say Titin Chatzois. Even, even during the day, Chatzois Hayyam also, you should say it. What does it mean? What, what does it mean that these three weeks is the time of Avelus that we're crying over the Chorim Beis HaMegdash? So to say that it means crying means atzfus, unhappiness, that us Jews never have. You know, there's no such thing by in Judaism as a time not to be happy, to be by atzfus, to be, how you say atzfus in English? Uh, depressed. depressed. To be depressed. Not sad. There's a difference between depressed and sad. Two different things. There's, nothing, there's no such word in Judaism as depressed. These two weeks we have to be sad, maybe we have to cry with the Chorim Mesa Mikdash, but it's not a crying of depression. What is it? What type of crying is it that we're crying in these three weeks? So there's a beautiful word that I saw from the Nesiva Shalom. He says like this He says that Plato, who was a philosopher in the times of Yemiya, came to Yemiya Novi after the Chorim Bayes, and they were crying over the Chorim Bayes, and he says to him, Yemiya, what are you crying about? The bias, the Chubber bias happened already a long time ago. It's not coming back. It's gone. So why are you crying? As, as we have the expression, we don't cry over spilled milk. It's finished, it's gone. So why are you crying? That's what he asked Yemiya. And Yemiya told him that I have an answer, but you'll never understand the answer, and therefore I'm not going to tell it to you. That's what Yemiya told him. So what does that mean? What was, the, what was the true answer that Yemiya was holding back, withholding from Plato? They didn't want to share with him because he said, you won't understand this answer. So the answer is like this. We know that if someone loses a loved one, there's a mitzvah to be misabu. If something happened to somebody, a person has to cry. Why is a person crying? Because it's, it's, it's sorry, something happened, something bad happened. That's the emotions of a person. But there's also something called that Hashem made in the Teva that after a while a person forgets about it. That's why after a year a veilus is over. If someone says he wants to have a veilus longer, we don't allow him even to have a veilus longer. Hashem made a gzera that if somebody lost a loved one, Hasfushalam, then after a while he forgets about it. It's meant to be forgotten about. Like Plato told Yemiya that after a while it's gone, it's finished. You have to move on in life. So why are you crying for? That's true. So if the crying of the Khurban bias would have been a crying of of of, uh, of of what we lost, then eventually it stops. That was Plato's time to Yemi, which is a very good time. Bias is not here anymore, it's finished, why are you crying? Yemi had an answer. And Yemi's answer was the fact that Kleisar cries every year now because of the of the Churban bias, we're not crying because of atzvus, we're not crying because of depression, we're crying for one thing. It's a crying of yearning. Meaning, we have to realize in these three weeks what we're missing. We have to think about what we're missing, and through that we'll yearn to get the new Beis Amigdash, Mehen of Yemen. So but Yaakov's crying for you, All right, come back. That's what Yaakov, when he was crying for Yosef, he didn't forget about it. That's how he knew that Yosef was still alive. Because it was, uh, he never forgot about it. It must be that Yosef was still alive. He didn't know he was alive. He had a feeling, but he didn't yeah, know he was alive. Right, he had a feeling he was alive because he knew he wasn't forgotten in life. Yeah. That's how he... But he that's continued a, to cry for that, that was the, that was the hurt over the year. Yeah. He had a hurt, but he didn't know why. He had right. a hurt. He had a hurt. He still, I mean, it couldn't, it couldn't forget about it. And the reason why I couldn't forget about it because Yosef was still alive. But that was more of the Simon of Yaakov that he knew that Yosef was still alive. He wasn't, wasn't 100% sure. Because the right arrived from the Pasuk that Yaakov knew that Yosef was alive. Because when Yaakov was speaking to the brothers and they wanted to take Binyama down, he says, in the Pasuk it says that Yaakov said, Ach Torev Toraf, Yaakov was taken away. Yes, sir. Yes. Yosef was, was taken away. He was taken away. Ad Heina. I didn't see him till now. Now, if someone's gone, someone's dead, you don't say, he's dead, and I didn't see him till today. Of course not. <laughs> How are you going to see him? So right from the post that Yaakov really knew 
that Yisro was still alive. For Leir Yisro Ad Heina, and the reason is because it wasn't Nishkach and Aleif. Yaakov kept on knowing, he, he knew, he felt this missing, that something was bothering him, that he's missing Yosef. So the yearning that we have, the crying that we have for Abbas Amigdash, <coughs> is not something that's for the past. We lost Abbas Amigdash, we're crying because we lost Abbas Amigdash. It's not why we're crying. We're crying, the crying we have is for the future. It's gagum, as they say, it's yearning for the future to have back the Abbas Amigdash. So what's the crying about? The crying is to realize what we're missing. Once we know what we're missing, we yearn to have back what we know it's going to come. We know the third base of this is going to come. So the crying is to, to yearn for the future, to realize what we're missing, to yearn for the future. <coughs> now, what is it? We have a cries about the miss. What are we crying about? There's a, there's a famous story with the Sami Rebbe. <coughs> that someone came to the Sami Rebbe and said that this and this person is doing a big business deal. He wants me to invest with him. So, should I do it? Do you think it's a good idea? Should I invest with him or not? And the Sam Rebbe said, don't invest with him. Don't. He says, yeah, but it looks like it's a very good deal. <coughs> telling you, don't invest with him. <coughs> okay? A few weeks, a few months later, whatever it was, the whole deal, everything plunged, and the person lost all his money. So the person who didn't invest went back to the Sam Rebbe and said, how did you know? You're not, you're not in business. How did you know that this, that this deal is going, to be, is going to end up being sour? So he says, I didn't know for sure, but this person who was making the deal was by me a couple of days before you came to me, and it cracks me, Mashiach has to come. If someone's complaining, Mashiach has to come, I know he's in trouble. <laughs> That's what he said. If it cracks me, Mashiach has to come, I know he's in trouble. <laughs> That's what the Simon has said. But the truth is, we think about it, it's a very, very true word that he said. We hear someone say, oh, we have to have Mashiach. Usually the reason is because things aren't going so well. And he was like, yes, okay, that's Mashiach. But if things are going well, and people are content, the people are happy, then no there's no crash for Mashiach. <laughs> there's no crash for Mashiach. The question is, why not? But that's the way it is. So someone ever saw that that person cracks, oh, Mashiach has to come. He knew that something was not going good for this person. <clears throat> But what is it? What, are, what is the yearning that we have to have? So I'm just going to read to you a little bit from this uh, safe from the Chafetz Chaim that's called Tepisil Yeshua. The Chafetz Chaim, as I said, has a lot of small farm. One of his farm is a safe called Tepisil Yeshua. And he starts off and he has a question. He says, he says to Pashas and Tzavim, that when's Mashiach going to come? After everybody does Tshuva, everyone comes back, Tashem, Feshavta, Tashem, Alakecha, then Everything will be good. Bachar Sayyam, Mashiach will come. It says the Chafetz Chaim, he has a steel. The one place we see that it says that what's going to bring Mashiach, what's going to bring Mashiach is Tshuva. People are becoming better, and Mashiach is going to come. It says the Chafetz Chaim, but it says in the Gemara in Sanhedrin, the opposite. The Gemara in Sanhedrin says, Ikhfus of the Mashiach, what's going to happen by the times, by the footsteps of Mashiach, Ikhfus of the Mashiach, Chutz Piyatsky, we all know, Chutz is going to be very prevalent, not prevalent, but very common. Ve'en Techacha, no one's going to listen to Techacha. Na'orim Pnei Zekeinim Yalbinu, the young will embarrass the old. Zekeinim Yamdu Pnei Ketanim, Zekeinim are going to stand up for younger people. I was once by a Kiddush and Shabbos, I was sitting down, there's an empty seat, very innocently I sat down there. And a seven-year-old boy comes over to me and says, excuse me, it's my seat. <laughs> <laughs> and I threw this mission right away. <laughs> so it's my Mashiach. Well, it's my Mashiach. Yeah, yeah, no, it's my Mashiach. Sure you know, that, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> the it's a, steps up. Yeah, unfortunately, it's yeah. a common thing. When we were kids, we grew up, you're on a city bus or anything, and a, an old person walks in, whether it's Jewish or not, you stand up for him, you let him sit down. Today, <laughs> you, know, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you tell a kid, it's old man, so... But they never know what you want from them. <laughs> that's, that's the Mishnah. The Mishnah says that, uh, that, that not just that, the older people are going to stand up for the younger people to sit down for them. Because that's to be the Kamen. So ask the Chafetz Chaim, so what is it? What's going to be when Mashiach comes? Is it going to be that Klai Yisrael is going to be doing tshuva? Or is it going to be the opposite, that's going to be so bad that... that um, that chutz and, and everything else. Says the Chafetz Chaim, 
says the author wrote him, he wants to give one tarot. He says both of them are true. Shleim Emes. Both of them are going to happen in times of Mashiach. What does that mean? It says like the Ba'achra is the man of Geula, you have to Shnei Sugei Anoshem. There's been two types of people in Klai Yisrael. V'shneim Azru B'kirv HaGeula. And both of them are going to help to bring the Geula. Two Katam in Klai Yisrael. And both of them are going to help to bring the Geula. Kasha Nevan. Why? You're going to find people it's going to be hard times. And people are going to be themselves to deen, to serve Hashem. There going to be terrible things going on in the world. And there's going to be a cut of clients that's going to say, no, we're going to fight against the world, what's going on in the rest of the world. And we're going to be mechazik ourselves to serve Hashem. We call Hashem Heim of Neim. So he says, She was man, she is Rabu Hamasparatim, or Imdim Lifrites for the Haris Das Kurdish. There's been a lot of people who are going to try to come and break through the walls of our Kedusha. Kleisol has certain walls of Kedusha, but we don't break through them, we stay inside them. So certain people will come and try to break it. And Meshara Aces, Sataiva, Vachemda, Shlucha Deitar, other Aces, people are going to give a Kleisol that are against the Torah. And they're going to say, No, it's for the Torah, it's good. All the Aetis from the Yitzhahara, says Taivas and Chemdus, then end up trying to break the walls of Judaism. It says the Chavaz Chaim, but there's going to be a Katar Klai Israel that's going to stay in the walls and not let the bridge go through, and they're going to stay there and keep strong. That's going to be one Katar Klai Israel. It says the Chavaz Chaim, this Kat of Klai Israel, this group of Klai Israel, is going to be much, much better than any group of Klai Israel that existed from, from Avinu and on. Why? Because the times of the Avais, the times of the Nevi'im, the times of the Tanoim, the Amiraim, the Ga'inim, the Rishonim, the Achreinim, in the times of all these Tzadikim, they had their cat of Klai Yisrael, and no one was coming to fight there, only the non-Jews always tried to destroy Klai Yisrael. But in the Jews themselves, no one was coming to destroy them. That's going to be one cat. Then he says, you have another cat, then on them it says the Mishnah Tzadikim. That the other part of Klai Yisrael you can have, that for them it's going to be Chuspi Yazgi, and Ktanim if they, Gdoyanof and Ktanim Yamoidu. So he says both of them are going to bring Mashiach. Why? So he says it's going to come so bad, the Matziv, that Hashem is going to have to bring Mashiach at the end. <coughs> it's going to become so intolerable, because like the Mishnah says it's in Hedrin, that Hashem is going to have to bring Mashiach because of how bad the Matziv is in Klai Yisrael. But, there's going to be a different cat. If you're not going to have the other cat of Klai Yisrael, who's going to keep strong, then Hashem will need to bring Mashiach, says the Chavetz Chaim. You have to have the, this one part of Klai Yisrael that just keep strong, and do tshuva, and do what they have to do, and then they stay strong. The other cat of Klai Yisrael, yeah, and then it says the Mishnah's in Hedrin, that they're going to end up doing a lot of bad things. So this comes back to the idea of from Jews of preventing Mashiach from coming by being from. From Jews? Prevent Mashiach from coming. Why? Because the world hasn't gotten bad enough that God is forced to bring them. That could be true, but there's enough people that are, that take care of that side. There's enough people that take care of the side that... So we're not blocking it. No, we're not blocking it. Don't worry. We're not blocking the bad side from becoming bad. Unfortunately, they're doing a good job themselves without us. I don't think we have to help them out. Like someone tells me today, I said to him, have an easy fast. So he says to me, who says you're supposed to have an easy fast? A fast is meant to do tshuva. Right? So when you're fasting, who says it's meant to be easy? Maybe a fast is meant not to be easy, and that's the way a person does tshuva. Right? It's a good question. Why would you answer such a person? We all wish each other easy fast. Why? Maybe you should have a hot fast and you should, and you should end up doing tshuva because of it. So I told the person, that's your department. That it shouldn't be easy for you because you want the tshuva. I don't have to worry about a way that it should be hard for you to do the tshuva. That's not my department. You, it, it should be hard for you? Okay, I have to wish you it should be easy for you. That everything should be good for you. That bad should happen? Like anytime so, like someone, someone has, someone has a dinner virus, right? So it's good for him to get punished in this world. So we should get 
schar in the world to come. So maybe I should go ahead and punish the person. Make it hard for him. A poor person comes to you for tzedakah, and you say, it's good that you should be poor. Because if you're poor, you have no money, you'll, you'll end up doing tshuva, you'll end up uh, having more than haba. The answer to that is, I don't have to worry about your nisyayinus and your haba. I have to worry about myself to make sure it's good for you. Right? You give a brach that everybody should have an easy fast, because for me, you should have an easy fast. Your cheshbon is that it's good for you not to have an easy fast. They should do tshuva. That's between you and Hashem. It's not between me and you. I have to worry about to make sure everything is good. Same thing over here. The bad that's happening, we don't have to help them out. It's, uh, we have to worry about just the good. Says the Chafas Chaim. Omnam, gam zoyis egidlo nechom zal meroish, kile hakol yam du madrega zoyis, not everyone's going to stand this madrega at the end, but after the yomim, there's going to be a cat of clients that's going to stand up and keep the faith. Not everyone's going to be like that. The yokim dor hachodosh, which is the Mishnah Sanhedrin, shayim lehepecha rishonim. They're the opposite of the of the rishonim of the original people who were leading Klai Yisrael. Shayam du be madrega shfeder be matzav adas ma'oid. But everyone's going to do whatever they want. We shouldn't get, you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't, 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 this is a good sign for us. It is Mesimone Ha'gu'ula. Ke'ela Rishoyni Mikivu Ha'gu'ula B'maseyem Ha'toivim The first people will bring Mashiach with their good deeds. Ve'elu Nami Yikivu Ha'gu'ula And these other people will also bring the Ge'ula. V'hayin Yishe B'doyi Second Morim Shalaf Ha'doyi He says And then he says You should pick. Decide what you want. The Ve'achas Yom Mashiach comes And there are two people who made Mashiach come. This is be a cat of people who kept to the Torah as we cut the people who didn't keep to the Torah. Which cut do you want to be from? Says the Chavaz Chaim, you choose. They're both true. They're both true. Both cut among the Mashiach. And then he goes on and he says, getting back to where we started from, then he goes on and he says, so that is Tzipis Ali Yeshua. Tzipis Ali Yeshua means, did you wait for Mashiach to come? What does it mean? How am I waiting? What, am I, what do I have to do? And what are we crying about these days? That we cry that the Sheikh should come, the Bishabinta should come. What type of Bakir do we have that we said is a is a cry of hope for the future? So the Khafas Khab, that crying of hope is to keep to this cat what's doing what's right. And to realize to realize what we're missing. What are we missing? We're missing, we had the Basim, we had we had the Nevi'im, we knew exactly what's right, what's wrong. They told us what's right and what's wrong. Now we don't have that. Now a lot of it's uh, unclear. We find lately, a lot of times, questions come up, and we're not sure what's right and what's wrong. We have no one to guide us to tell us exactly what's right and what's wrong. That's going to be equal to the Mashiach, says, says the, says the Chafetz Chaim. And how are you going to know what's right and what's wrong? Whatever stays in the borders of Kedusha, that we know is right. Whatever crosses that border, we know we stay away from, and that's not part of Judaism, and therefore, it won't be called special issue. So that's what do we do about it? So we know there's a halacha that there's um, six mitzvahs, three days a person has to do. Six constant mitzvahs that a person has to do, which are, some of them are at least, Benamuna, believing that Shayava and Mashiach, Mashiach will come, and not to give up hope. Now, when a person becomes content, like we said before from the summer of, a person becomes content and he's happy with what he has and he doesn't see anything is missing, he has no reason to hope. What's he hoping for? What, what does he need Mashiach for? He's hoping it will continue as it is. Yeah, he's happy, everything is good. What's he missing? So the first thing in these three weeks that we have to do is, is we have to realize what are we missing? What, what happened when the, the basic Midrash was around? What did we have? And now, what don't we have? What are we missing that we should want Mashiach to come? That's the first thing. Now, if you ask an average Jew in the street, 
Okay, so what are you missing? What, what, what's what's wrong? Everything you, you, you have panasa, you have good kids. Huh? Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Everything is great. Everything is good. Baruch Hashem. You have good kids. Baruch Hashem. We're happy, right? So, what do we need to be some this for? What do we need more? They ask the average person, what do you want Mashiach to come? Why? What are we missing that you want Mashiach to come? That's a good question. I'm not going to answer that question now. A little bit, we'll start, but it's a hard question. And, and the truth is, how do, we, how do we get this yearning to realize that we're missing something? So the first step is, we have Shesh Mrs. Tvindiyas to know exactly that Hashem exists, how we're not close to Hashem, how we go our daily lives, a person can go through his daily life, what happened to Shasta Beis was, was kind. Shasta Beis was around, a person went ahead, he did an Avera, he did a Karmi. So a person does an Avera, what happens? You feel bad the first time, you feel bad the second time, and the third time already, that's like you had to. It's a mitzvah. It's a mitzvah. It's a yeah. It's called Rafuna Setter. What's that? Nasalakheta. Yeah, Nasalakheta. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nasalakheta. That's what happens. So, what, what happens is, unfortunately, we get used to it, and nothing is done about it, and we're content. We don't realize it. Times of the base of English, it wasn't that way. In times of the base of English, there's someone there in Avera, there was a Einish, it had been a carbon. Adam came, warned him, he brought it, he did a he the carbon. It was a whole different system. Today, a person goes his whole life, a good person, I'm not talking about a person who's looking to do a various, a good person. He's trying to do good, and unfortunately, we all have the weak, weak moments. Something goes wrong, we do an Avera, and we move on. Right? We go to the next Avera. Right? Once, you get, once you get used to one part, then you can go a little further. That's the way it goes, unfortunately. If a person realizes Bashasta based ministry wasn't that way. Bashasta based ministry was around with a Vim who told us what to do. The closeness to Hashem in the times of the Baisa Migdash and the closeness to Hashem today is as I say Mikatsa Lakatsa. It's far apart from each other. <clears throat> today a person who goes to Shul down with like a mensch and he, in the morning he wakes Hashem is around. Throughout our day, how many times do we connect with Hashem and say, Yeah, we're doing this for Hashem. We're running our lives without it. If a person realizes that this is what we're missing from the Khurban bias, that Hashem is so far removed from us, so a person has what to yearn for. He knows what he's waiting for. He's waiting for Mashiach to come. Beis Amidish is here. We'll, sh- we'll see the Gilish Kinar. A person times by Beis Amidish, he woke up to Yerushalayim and he saw all the Nisim that happened in the Beis Amidish every single second of the day. He saw Hashem. Today we don't see that. You go into the base of Migdash and you see the, the Mizbeach and there's a fire in the Mizbeach and there's the smoke from the fire going straight up like a pillar and not moving with the wind. Because one of the Nisim that happened in the base of Migdash, a person sees. There's Hashem. Today, we don't see that. Today, on a regular day, unfortunately, we don't see Hashem because Hashem is Benista today. So that's what the Chavaz Chaim says. Sipis al Yeshua means, you have to realize, we have to be from the cat that is waiting for Hashem and not going out of our boundaries and going over to the cat. When we see something like that, a kid goes over to you by a kid and says, it's my seat, right? Please stand up, seven-year-old kid. <clears throat> it should shake us to the core. We shouldn't get used to it and say, yeah, okay, let's move on. It's not that way. This is Echus the Meshicha. It's saying something to us. So I want to have a good answer for this. I had a a Rebbe in camp many years ago, a little Rebbe in camp many years ago. And he was telling us, as a, as a boy, then I was uh, 10 years old, 11 years old, as a boy, how do you, how do you end up you know, trying to feel a little bit that we're missing something and you want to yearn from a Shriak? What do you do? So, there's a, this, some, someone called, I don't know if you heard of him, his name is Dr. Sarno. He has a book on back pain. He has a book on back pain. And what does he say? He says like this. He says that all p- back pain that you have is in the mind. It's all in the mind. And if you convince yourself that the pain is not there, eventually the pain goes away. He has a whole theory about it. He says, you ever heard of it? Mm. He has a whole theory about it. 
that that the back pain, he says other pains also. He says mano comes from that also. He says he says mano. mano. Yes, it's, it's a book, Dr. Sandler's book. It's a, the mind. I think it's mind over. over man. I'm not trying to remember the exact name of the book, but he says there that if a person gets up in the morning when he has back pain and says to himself the whole time, I don't have back pain. It's not there. It's not there. You do it the whole time. Eventually, you convince yourself, and the pain goes away. That's what he says. Okay. I tried it. For me, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> for some people, it works. But uh, for me, it didn't work. But that could be maybe in back pain. But in Amuna and in and believing in certain things and beliefs, it's definitely true that if a person says to himself constantly, I believe in Hashem. Hashem is here. And it's constantly saying it. You convince yourself after a while. So this learning that we told me when I was in the 10, 11 year old, it says, it says to me, if you say Ani Mam every single day, in the beginning, yeah, some of it you will believe, some of it you won't believe. At the end, as the saying goes so, so long, you'll stop believing it. You'll stop believing Ani Mam. The same thing is the opposite. When somebody, you know, <coughs> puts into people's minds other crazy Ashkafas that aren't true, after a while, you hear it, you hear it, you hear it, and you stop believing it. So the way to go the other way is to constantly say it out. That's why, you know, our grandparents always said, always mentioned Hashem. Always spoke about Hashem. Always mentioned it. I had a, I had a couple of weeks ago, someone came, out, someone came over to me, he said, you should know that today is an issue, they say today is an issue that kids don't really believe in Hashem. Kids don't really believe in Hashem. That's what they say. And the reason why so many kids are not the way they should be and they're going off the derach is because the moon of Hashem, the moon of the, is the real moon is not there. That's what this person was telling me. So I said to this person, do you believe in Hashem? He says, I think so, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I believe in Hashem. So I said to ask this person, what do you mean you're not sure you believe in Hashem? And this person gave me the examples. These three of my friends are right now not where they should be. One of them was a, was a, was a, became a Mechal Shabbos, but for Hesia, that's where they should be holding. And the reason why, his personal son, the reason why that his friends are where they are now is because they never really deep down believed in Hashem. And therefore, that's why they are where they are today. That's what this person told me. So I challenged this person. I said to him, that's why they're off, that's why they're off today because they don't believe in Hashem? Let me ask you a question. This friend of yours, if something has shalom would happen to him, and a car accident has shalom, and he's in the hospital, and he's clinging between life and death, what would he do? What would the friend do at that point? Daven. Take out the hill and daven. What are you daven? What are you daven about? What are you daven about? This person has a, has a time that they, 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 they say everything's going bad for them. What would the person do? So this person, yeah, of course, I got to tell him to What do you mean, Davin? You don't believe in Hashem. So why are you going to Davin? Who are you Davin to? The answer is, the answer, just in case, maybe, just in case, just in case maybe there's Hashem, yeah. <laughs> just in case. There's no atheists in foxholes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or before mass tests. Right. <laughs> The answer is that the Amun of Hashem, everyone has. But we intend to hide it, to bury it down. We only bring it out at certain times. But on a day-to-day, on a day-to-day we don't bring it out in the open. It's all buried there someplace. The real Amun of Hashem, everybody has. When it comes time to Eish Sarah, we all know we turn to Hashem, we dive to Hashem. That's not a question. So the problem is not that they don't have a Amun of Hashem. Everybody has a Amun of Hashem. The problem is we don't utilize it. We keep it hidden and we don't utilize it. That's something else. That's the question. How do we bring out this Amun of Hashem on a constant basis? And the answer is, we take our imams, and every day we say our imams after davening. Or we constantly have on our tongue, like, our Yaakov, like Yitzchak said about Yaakov, that Hashem's name is always befiv, always on his tongue. That's the way we bring it out. And if we constantly do that, eventually uh, we start believing in it. We start not believing it. We start bringing out what's hidden. I don't want to say we start believing, we all believe in it. We start bringing out what's hidden down there. And once you bring out what's hidden down there, 
the yearning will automatically be there because we see we're missing it. We see that the reason why we don't have Hashem in our daily lives is because we don't see all the nisim that constantly happen in times of the base of the This is a way of being mashlim those nisim, constantly speaking it out and saying, Baruch Hashem, yes, I'll be able to go there if Hashem, you know, with Hashem's help. These type of things in the old generations, right, it was constant, always. Always had Hashem's name on their tongues. Today, unfortunately, it's a. Uh, if someone says it, uh, it's not cool. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's cool. Not cool He's a fruit me if he says it. it or anything like that. They, they, have, they have names about it. But the truth is, that's the issue. It gets hidden, and we don't bring it out. So maybe in these three weeks, we should be recapable upon ourselves that we should do it. We should work on it, and realize that there is a hest upon him of Hashem, and bring out this that we all have hidden in us. This yearning for Hashem. And with that, we'll be able to. Uh, the one question: What is the difference between the three the three weeks yeah. and the last nine days? From Rosh is, is it? There's a big difference. Is it, is it, there's a big big difference. Yeah, the first th- the three weeks is only haircuts, music. That's all. That's all. And, uh, that's and, all, and right? maybe maybe new clothing, maybe maybe new clothing. But we'll see. Mitchell will speak about it. But anything else you can do? Everything else you can do. Mitchell will speak about it when we get to the nine days. We'll see the nine days itself, you know, the wash, you know, the shower, these type of things. We'll get to it. But in the three weeks, the only thing is, is haircuts, is music, and is... Simchas. Yeah, Simchas, music. The music, yeah. That's all included in Simchas. And, um, and new clothing, something new. If you make, the Dalacha says that if you uh, buy something, make a Shekhyanu on it, you shouldn't do it in the three weeks. Pre-Chadash. Huh? Pre-Chadash. Pre-Chadash also not. If you make a Shekhi, I don't want it. Shabbos. Huh? Shabbos. Shabbos may be yeah. But uh, during the three weeks, it said you shouldn't buy something, they make a Shekhi, I don't want it. <coughs> so the question is today... Or is that the nine days? Why well, the three Re- weeks? Renovation. So renovation is something else. Renovation is a whole different question. Because renovation is... Even the nine days may be okay. It says, you now don't have a binyan shal simcha you now that'll build in the nine days. In the three weeks, you're sure okay with the renovations. But in the nine days, is something else. We'll have to see what, what the exact halachas are. It says, you shouldn't build a binyan shal simcha, something to, that you're building for happiness. If I'm building a place to live, I'm making a renovation because I need more space to live, that you could do. That you're allowed to do. A person has a nice big house, but he wants to build something in the back, you know, for relax. That, that, that we'll see. That maybe is a problem. That's being so simple, maybe. But a regular yeah, renovation. I think if it extends past it and it's not going to be finished by that time, what's the difference? Oh, so it doesn't get finished. As long as that yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that'll be icy. That'll be icy with being so Even if you're not going to finish it within the nine days. I don't think so. Uh, building something is a, is a disgusting thing. It doesn't look nice, so you don't get any pleasure out of it. Right? No, you get pleasure as it's, build, it's building it up. <coughs> <laughs> is there are there any leniencies for Rosh Hashanah itself as opposed to the other eight days? No. It's the same. It's the same. Once Rosh Hashanah starts, everything kicks in. So Rosh Hashanah doesn't have a had to know. holiday rather than no. it normally does. No. Right. No meat. All this is all only the nine days. Three weeks for now. Till later, I think we'll speak about it right before nine days. But uh, for the three weeks, all the only thing is is the it's music, it's availus of music and haircuts and something new they make shachiyan on. The question is today, we don't make shachiyan on anything. <laughs> That's the problem, because a new suit doesn't mean anything today. Buy it's a wolf and a shirt, we don't make shachiyan on today. But still, some places can hold, they shouldn't wear new clothing. New clothing. The Rebbe used to talk about this idea, the Rebbe of Salavechik, the one who used to talk about this idea of Simcha and Reyes. That, huh? the, the, that there was an opinion of uh, not having some chimeras and participating in anything that were, it, it, it's, uh, it makes it better when there's lots of people involved. Together. When? During the three weeks or during the nine days? Mm. Nine days, probably. Maybe the nine days. Okay. Nine days, yeah. yeah. Three weeks you could. Like going to a ball game and that kind of right. stuff. Right, that's, that's, that's in the nine days. Right. That's in the nine days. Yeah, yeah you now they have, a, even without music, you now they have sudas, mirayas. Mm-hmm. People get together. Mm-hmm. That's what's the in the nine days. When the three weeks you could do it.